You know what seems like a really easy way to make money? Being one of these YouTube dropshipping gurus. I should really look into that. I don't even know where to start though. Okay, Google. How do I become a YouTube guru? The first thing you need to do is cut that awful hair. You look like a smurf. I don't know, uh, Google. I think this looks pretty good, no? No, you look like a 90s boy band frontman. The 90s called they want their frosted tips back. That's kind of harsh, but I mean, I guess I can fix my hair. What else do I need to do, though? You need to hang up a whiteboard on your wall. That way you look smart. Okay, so I gotta fix the hair, and I need to install a whiteboard. Is there anything else I need to do? At least put on a dress shirt so you look somewhat professional. You're embarrassing yourself. Alright, you guys, thank you for tuning in to the very long-awaited YouTube debut of both myself and the Keylytic YouTube channel. I know I've kept you guys waiting for far too long, and I know most of you are coming from the e-commerce products group on Facebook. So thank you guys for a growing community that's been awesome, and we're growing super quick at the time of recording this. I think we're at about 3,800 members, and we started not even two months ago. Uh, so the growth has been awesome, and I just wanted to thank you guys so much for that. Uh, and I have finally uh, fixed the hair a little bit, and I do have a whiteboard installed over there, which maybe we'll use at some point. Uh, but I really hope that this YouTube channel will be something that will not only provide a lot of value, but hopefully uh, be fun for you guys. I know a lot of content out there can be kind of dry. Uh, so I'm going to try and be as clear as possible with this video and other videos I make. But if you do have any questions for me, then I want you guys to either comment and I'll get back to you either in this video, join the e-commerce products Facebook group, which I will link to below. And you can also follow me personally on Instagram. That's just for the clout. I'm probably not even going to put too much business stuff on there. But without any further ado, because I've kept you waiting for far too long, let's uh, jump into this Pinterest guide. And hopefully you guys will learn how to use Pinterest to grow and scale your dropshipping business. Okay, so why are we using Pinterest? I think what people need to realize when it comes to e-commerce and business is that it's a numbers game. If you're only posting your products on the big three social media channels, being YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, you're not really maximizing the potential reach of your products. Reach, again, is a fancy term of saying how many people can potentially see your product. So we're going to go over some statistics on why you need to absolutely be using Pinterest yesterday. So the first thing is more than 70% of people who use Pinterest get inspiration on what to buy compared to just 17% on Facebook. So what that means is people who go on Pinterest have the intent to buy. They go on Pinterest to buy products. Why are people going on Facebook? They're not going on Facebook to buy products. They're going on Facebook to look at memes or look at how their friends are already married and have houses. One eternity later. So that's what you're using Facebook for. You're not using it to buy. Pinterest, you are. So that kind of really falls into these other stats. We can see shoppers referred by Pinterest are 10% more likely to follow through with a purchase than visitors from other social networking sites. And Pinterest users are nearly twice as likely to purchase than Facebook users. So that is incredibly powerful. And if that doesn't convince you enough that you need to be on Pinterest right now, then I don't know what's going to do it for you. And lastly, 79% of Pinterest users are women. And women are the primary purchases for a household. So it's super important to realize that if you're going to use Pinterest and your target audience is women or people who would like feminine products, you need to absolutely 100% be marketing on Pinterest because you're going to get some insane traffic from women who want to buy. And yes, you can find that maybe on some other sites like Instagram and Facebook, but most of the time you're just kind of catching them off guard with a sale. On Pinterest, they're in buying mode and that's when you need to capture customers. And if you're going to do that organically, Pinterest is the absolute 100% way to go. Okay, so once you go to Pinterest.com, you're going to see their nice little homepage right here. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to continue as a business because you're going to be creating a business account just in case you want to use ads in the future. So you're going to see down here it says continue as a business. So we're going to click that. And then you're going to have to put in a bunch of information. So for your email, just put in your email. Make a password, whatever your business name is, and then you can see you have a bunch of different options. You can say what you are. They just kind of use this to collect data on their end. So, you know, if you feel like you're not one of these, then that's fine. I mean, really, you're probably going to be a brand, so you would just put brand um, or retailer. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then website. If you don't have a website yet, you can leave that blank. It's totally optional. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this information in, and you should do the same, and then we will continue to the next step. 
Okay, so once you put in your business information, you're going to have to just fill out a bit more stuff. So whatever your language is, I just put English because that's what I speak, United States. We're going to go next. So now here's where it's going to ask you a bit of potentially useful information. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to pick five things that you're interested in. So in this case, if you already have a niche that you know you're in, then you're going to want to pick some uh, threads, if you will, or some content that would be most relevant to your business and most relevant to what your customers would like. So let's just say, for example, we're scrolling through here and we're, let's say we're a women's fashion and beauty uh, niche. So let's look through here. So we could say hair and beauty, we could say makeup, we could say hairstyle, we could say nails, uh, quinceanera, uh, we could do braids. I mean, you guys get the idea. There's health and fitness, photography. There's so many different things that you guys can select. Uh, now, if you're just a general store and you're not too sure, what I would do is just pick things that you're most interested in because if you're interested in those things, you might get an idea on what you should be selling or what people who share your interests might be willing to buy. And you'd have the unique experience of being able to know how to market to them because you know the kind of things they like. So in this example, though, we're just going to say I have a beauty brand, so I select these things, and then we're going to say done. And now our last step, uh, this wants to get a browser button so you can just kind of save your ideas you find around the web. Uh, the web. We're just going to skip that. That's not necessarily uh, too useful for us right now. So you can see once this loads up, what this did is it took what our interests were and it created this huge board, this collage of potential products. And so now this is, again, if you want to do product research and you want to see the type of content or products people are buying, you can just scroll through here. Uh, so as I'm scrolling through here, a lot of these posts actually aren't that good. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a bit more about now uh, how to actually create a pin. We're not going to get into ads in this video. Uh, this is just going to be for creating free traffic. And so we're going to talk about right now how to actually create a good pin and then how to post it. So let's do that. Okay, so obviously creating that business page is very quick and it's very easy, but now that we have our page, we're going to need to actually start creating some posts. So hopefully you have some products already picked out that you want to sell. Uh, so again, we're just going to run with this makeup niche, which was probably not the best idea because I have absolutely no clue about makeup. But what I did is I just went and <laughs> selected a random product, and this one seems like it's kind of cool. I didn't actually do any product research, so I'm not saying to sell this product. This just a random product I picked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through AliExpress and see if there's any pictures I really like. Um, I think that actually, that first image was actually really good. So I, I like this. It's crisp. It's clean. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to save this image as whatever it is and my folder of spicy memes. Yeah, I, sh I should have probably cleaned up my computer a little bit, but whatever. So <laughs> I'm just going to save this image to my desktop. Uh, so now we have that image at our disposal. And what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to make an edit to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to canva.com. So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's pretty much a free graphic design site where you need literally less than zero experience and it's completely free uh, just to do some basic things. So like that Instagram influencer guide that is on the e-commerce page, shameless plug. Uh, you can see I made that in Canva and that took me about five minutes and this was already a template I used. So what we're going to want to do is already find a template that's perfectly laid out for Pinterest already. So you're going to go to find templates right here. First of all, you might need to make an account and sign in, but once you do all that, uh, we're going to go to find templates and they have a bunch of different templates to choose from. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in Pinterest so we can see Pinterest graphic. We're going to do uh, Pinterest graphic and it will hopefully populate. Yes, it did. It's going to populate a bunch of different uh, themes uh, and templates, I guess would be a better word for it, that you can just build on top of because the dimensions for Pinterest, normally you want something that's longer. Uh, so it's longer vertical than it is horizontal. So you can see a lot of these posts here, like this is longer up and down than it is left to right. So that's normally what does better on Pinterest because it takes up more room and it's just more eye catching. So we could really just pick any of these to work off of. So let's just scroll, oh my God. That's perfect, look at this, Jax, all, all I need to do is add the K, it was meant to be. So <laughs> we're gonna click this one. 
Uh, so you can see right here, you have a general idea of what it looks like. And we're just going to hit use this template. And what it's going to do is it's going to load up this template that we can just build right on top of. And now that we have our template, I guess we're going to hop into the next part, which will actually be creating the image and the creative. Okay, so now that our template's loaded up and ready to go, it's really not going to take that much work. We're just going to create this template to make sure it fits more of what we're trying to do. Uh, so in this case, I mean, I actually happen to find already a perfect template. This couldn't have worked out any better. I'm just going to add a K. Uh, instead of blog, we're going to do shop. And you're just going to kind of watch me fill out this and the, kind of the logic I use when I'm making a Pinterest post. Uh, and just kind of the copy you want to use and the imagery you want to use. Uh, there was a lot of things that I was actually drawn to about this just beyond the image. Uh, but yeah, just kind of watch me build this right now and we'll talk about some pros and cons and some things you should do and shouldn't do. Um, so what we're going to do right now is drag and drop to replace this photo. So we're going to click that. Now what's awesome about Canva is it's super, super easy to just upload a new product. So what we're going to do, you can see we have our saved product right here. And we're just going to drag that puppy right into here. And so you can see now we have it in our uploads. And it's just going to be as simple as dragging it, dragging it in. And we're going to make sure that it hopefully fits. So we're going to have to probably do a little bit of tweaking to make sure that everything fits just the way it wants to. So let me just get the formatting down off camera and then we'll continue with the rest. Okay, so I'm back. I didn't want to have to make you guys watch me getting this photo perfectly in frame because that would have been boring for both of us. So now that I have this Crayola brand lip crayon in frame here and it looks really good and it takes up most of the image, we're going to talk about some things you should definitely try to do when you're creating a Pinterest post and some things you should avoid. So right off the top, if you have absolutely no idea or no creativity on how to make a good post and the templates aren't really tickling your fancy, just go over to Pinterest and type in makeup products or you know whatever your niche or whatever your product is. So you can see for me, I was actually able to find a perfect post for me and this is kind of the formula I'm trying to follow which is why I like it and this is what I would recommend you do. So what I like about this First of all, you can see how much space it takes up. You see how long it is? I mean, just from scrolling down, you can see it's already into the second layer of images. And so it's just naturally going to catch your eye, which is awesome. Uh, so the formula as far as actually creating a post is I like the logo up top because when they go to your website, it's going to create that consistency. They're going to know they're in the right place. Uh, you can see they do have a call to action here. It says sign up today. There is no wait list. But when you look at the text compared to the rest of the image, the emphasis is on the products, not so much on the actual text. It doesn't take up too much of the total frame, but it's enough to catch your attention. So I think they did this absolutely beautifully. Pinterest is very similar to Instagram in a lot of ways because it's a very visual platform. So less is more when it comes to text on top of images. And I think they did this absolutely perfectly. So as far as uh, promoting your offer, you can do that in the text that's not in your actual image. So we'll get into that a bit later. So as far as get five beauty products for $10 a month, that's their offer. But they don't say that in the image. They let the products do the talking. And then they just say sign up today. So that's absolutely perfect. And that's kind of the uh, the algorithm, if you will, I'm going to want to follow. You can tell I'm a stats guy. I'm talking about algorithms for a Pinterest post. Uh, so you can see I have the logo here. So they had the uh, hottest makeup products. That's not really a call to action too much. You can say sign up today. There is no wait list. So you can either do a call to action or you can do something where it makes it clear it solves their problem or what they're looking for. So let's say someone, again, I'm totally making this up because I don't know too much about the uh, makeup market, but someone's using this uh, Crayola crayon here because why? What is their end goal? They want to have their lips look good. Why do they want to have their lips look good? Maybe it's for personal confidence. Maybe it's for, you know, some, some cutie boys that they've been seeing. So uh, I would just say something like uh, achieve fierce lips. So again, you're making clear that's the problem it solves. Could you do something better than that? Probably. I'm just kind of doing things on the fly, but hopefully you get the point of what I'm going to go, uh, trying to accomplish. It's either a call to action or you're stating a problem that you're going to solve or a uh, a solution that you provide. So you could say achieve fierce lips, which I think is fine, or say something like, uh, in this case they had sign up today, you can say click for more or do something like that. But I want to try and save that for a bit more in the bottom. So we're going to talk about now what to do with the bottom part of your image. So 
You can see this was the pretext they had. They said from lip oil, splash mask, check out the latest products you need to know. So that's fine uh, if you wanted to do a catalog where you want to show multiple products, like something like this where they're showing off a lot of different products in a catalog. Something like that is fine. But personally, what I would do here, to be honest, is make my call to, I would uh, double down on my call to action. So I would say, click below to learn more, for example. And you can see what I like about this down right here, this isn't a button, but it looks like a button, which is awesome. So people are gonna wanna click that just because they're so used to clicking buttons when they're navigating online. And so if you can create something like that where they have a place where they can clearly click, that's gonna do you a lot of favors for website hits and conversions. So you can see I did this uh, super quick. It's not the prettiest looking ad, but again, I just wanted to give you a general idea of the things I try to do and just the formula I look for. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this image and we're gonna upload it to Pinterest, which is gonna be the next step. Okay, so we created our image and now we're gonna wanna upload it. So we're gonna need to do two things when we upload our image. We're going to need to create a description to help the Pinterest algorithm find our post organically when people are searching through Pinterest. And then we're gonna also need to create a board. So we're gonna go over both of those things right now. So. What you're going to do, hover over this little plus sign right here, you're going to upload an image. So you can see upload image right here. We're going to want to pick that image we made on Canva. So we found it right here. We saved it to our desktop. So now the destination URL, what that's going to be is you're going to send them directly to your product page. Don't send them to your home page. Don't send them to your Instagram page unless that's what your goal is. You want to sell this specific Crayola Crayon uh, makeup lip product. So we're gonna make up whatever that URL is. Just copy and paste this from your Shopify store, your product page. So we're just gonna say this was Crayola Lipstick Jack Shop.com. Obviously, that's not a real URL, so when someone clicks on that, it's not gonna take them anywhere. But so what's gonna happen is because we have this, when someone clicks on our image, it's gonna redirect them right to that product page, which is what we want to do. So now we hit continue. So you can see I already created a board before, which was Jack's uh, Beauty Shop product gallery. But if you haven't done that yet, most likely if this is your first time, you haven't created a board. So you're gonna hit create board. And pretty much what this is, is this is just your feed. So whatever it is. So let's say this is our lipstick products. That means once we create it, that this product is gonna be posted on this specific board. So every board you have is different. So like, let's say you're a general store and you sell plants and you sell lipstick. You can have a board just for your plant products and you can have another board just for your lipstick products. So you can create some segmentation that way. Uh, so really you can create as many boards as you want or upload them to as many different boards as you want. There's no real hidden thing there that I've realized anyway or discovered yet. Um, so for a secret, no, we're gonna turn that off. Uh, but now for our actual post, it says, tell us about this pin. So what that really wants to know is, what do people need to type in to find this post? So first of all, we're gonna wanna create our actual call to action. So this is where I pull in my uh, cute little emojis. Let's just go, we could go uh, makeup. Let's see if there's any makeup emojis here. I'm not actually sure. I'm sure there's lipstick or nail polish, right? Yeah, it's gotta be something. So let's just do these puppies. And we'll say, this is where you're gonna, again, create your offer. So whatever your offer is on your Shopify store, whether it's buy one, get one free, also known as BOGO, or you know free product, just play shipping. We're just gonna say a buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. So if you wanna be more creative than that, you can. Uh, really the whole point of this is to make sure that your post gets found organically. So what's awesome about Pinterest is you can use hashtags and you can get some insight on what pins are trending in your niche. So for example, let's say hashtag, and I really hope this works or it's gonna make me look stupid. Uh, we're gonna say makeup and awesome. So you can see once we hit makeup, which is our niche, it suggested to us a bunch of different hashtags right now that are trending or that are getting a lot of uh, repins. So you can see makeup artist has a bunch of pins. So people are searching that hashtag a lot. So we're gonna use that one. We're gonna use hashtag makeup, what else was it? Makeup tutorial, hashtag makeup tips. Uh, and then you can just kind of freestyle. So hashtag lipstick, you can see that has a bunch of pins, hashtag lips, hashtag lip art. 
I'm just going to use these four. But when you're making a post like this, you should shoot for as a lot because you want to know what people are searching. So you're going to have to do a little research on your own. I can make that a separate video. We're not going to get into that in this video. This video would be an hour and a half long. Uh, so just put a bunch of hashtags that will help people find your post organically so you don't need to pay ads for people to find it. And so once you have your offer and you have some hashtags and you've chosen your board that you want to post it to, we're going to hit create. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a little pop-up window where you can see our post. You can either close it, you can see it now, or you can promote. So promoting, again, it's just like Facebook or Instagram ads. You can pay to actually post or boost rather your uh, post. We're not going to get into that in this video because that's a whole nother topic for another video. So we're just going to hit see it now so we can see what our post looks like uh, right now. So awesome. You can see this was the final post. And it looks pretty good. So you can see when someone goes to click it, it's going to redirect them right to our product page. Again, this isn't a real website, so it didn't take me anywhere. Uh, but you can see that we have our offer right here, and we have a bunch of different hashtags. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the video. If you guys want, I can talk more about actually growing an audience on Pinterest and how to make sure your Pinterest looks good. For right now though, the bare minimum, even if you have no intention of using Pinterest to grow an audience, you need to at least be using Pinterest to post your products because like I said earlier, it's gonna give you more organic traffic. So if nothing else, just treat this as another way of posting your product instead of Shopify. So it's just another channel to post your product. And like I said, the more places it's on, the more sales you're gonna get. That's going to wrap up the Pinterest video. Hopefully you guys got some value from that and you learned the importance of why you need to be using Pinterest, how to use Pinterest, how to make a post, and how to actually make sure that post can be found organically. So if you have any questions for me, you can join the e-commerce products Facebook group, which is where I'm very active, where most of you probably know me right now. Um, you can also add me on Instagram, which is at Marchese Jack. I'll put a link for that down below as well if you have any questions for me personally. Uh, or just comment on this video and hopefully I will have some more content for you guys. I do enjoy making these videos, but it takes a long time for me, especially when I'm just learning kind of how to use all this software. Uh, but if you want more content like this, if you didn't think I was too annoying and you actually learned something, then let me know. I want to create some content that's original because you guys can see all these gurus, you know, they, they've covered everything, but I haven't seen too much for Pinterest. Uh, so yeah, if there's any creative or unique content I can make for you guys that you really want and that does not exist yet, let me know and I will put it together for you. So I think that's going to do it. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video whenever that is.